Hey everyone, it's Jack Kramowski with Herdbook Ag Media, and I'm here to give you your Moving Iron Ag News update for this next October week. In our political news this week, Department of Agriculture has recently unveiled their new online planning tool, which is part of the ELAP, or Emergency Ass Assistance for Livestock, Honeybees, Farm and Farm-Raised Fish program, that is going to help determine uh, feed transportation and other costs related to severe drought-stricken areas. This was discussed briefly um, a little while ago. However, they are now officially ready to launch and to be offering this as a service to producers. MSNBC reported this week the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the National Security Agency, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation have released their dossier about a sort of groups that is called Black Matter. You may remember that this uh group of sorts is the group that was responsible for hacking some of the nation's largest uh, agribusinesses and food industries. It's the one from Russia. Since July, this group has been pretty active and have really noticed, seemed to be explicitly targeting the United States food and agriculture software. This type of movement indicates that right now the government is taking ransomware to be a critical threat to national security, even if it hasn't yet gone after governmental entities, but is, is right now currently focused specifically on food and agribusiness. Brazilian agriculture continues to suffer from terrible weather. Right now, the, this country, who is the world's, one of the world's largest grain growers, is seeing the coolest and driest October they have encountered, some say as long as in 30 years. And while we are in that region, we need to also remember that other countries, including uh, Colombia and Nicaragua, are suffering from global coffee supplies distribution issues. These two countries are expected to see a long arrival of delays on their exports to first world countries such as the United States, um, who are some of their largest consumers of their coffee products. And again, this is all entirely due to the ongoing shipping distributions and port congestion, of which there really has not been a lot of news or progress made to remedy the situation. Returning home to some of our national news, the Department of Agriculture recently estimated that this year's cotton crop is going to be over 23% of last year's output. However, while things are looking a lot better for cotton, Oregon, who is leading our country for Christmas trees being grown, are seeing some notable side effects from the drought, meaning that most of their trees seem to have red needles uh, from the harsh, harsh drought conditions they have been encountered. Right now, Deer and Company is still struggling with the labor movement that's happening in the United States and issues with their workers striking. The, the labor union, the United Auto Workers, recently voted down a proposed contract by the tractor retailer. John Deere said they're committed to reaching a new agreement in a separate statement. However, the date for this is currently unknown. Right now, the company is saying that they are still planning on continuing their operations as usual. Now, in this initial proposal, the wages were supposed to be uh, increased between 5 and 6%, and this is compared to the previously uh, intended 3% raises for 2023 and 2025. However, the workers and the union said that they believe that, the, that, especially in consideration of John Deere's record profits, despite the difficult economic situation, on top of the cost of inflation, overall labor shortages due to the pandemic, and the fact that despite all conditions, workers are still showing up in the midst of everything. They are entitled to, the company can do a little bit better than that. And of course, John Deere is not the only one who has seen these strikes and labor disputes. This also includes hospital workers, production, steel, um, and many, many other industries. Now, it should be noted that the longest uh, strike against John Deere, according to Magnetic Ag News, was back in 1986 and lasted for 163 days. A plant in San Jose, California, recently recalled over 20,000 pounds of both pork and beef tamales due to some misbranding issues and undeclared allergens, according to the Department of Agriculture. The products which were shipped out contained sesame seeds, an important allergen that was not declared on the product's final label. All right, that was short and sweet, but that'll catch you up for this week. This Ag News Update is brought to you by the Herdbook Ag Media, serving all your agribusiness writing, communication, and media needs. Find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or our company website, the-herdbook.com. Let me know you found out about us here in Moving Iron and get 20% off your first invoice.